So what is the plane of limbo? The outer planes are organized in a circular spectrum between good and evil, lawful and chaotic. Limbo is known as the plane of ever-changing chaos, and that makes sense because it is full chaos out of all the planes. But how do you even get there? Much less when you are there, what does it look like, sound like, feel like? And what are the inhabitants and locations? All the stuff you can find. There. And to take it one step farther, because that's what I do here on this channel, is add in homebrew mechanics like wild magic and stuff to make you truly feel like you're in the plane of limbo instead of just another section of the material plane. I also made a complete traveler's guide to limbo in the biggest PDF that I've made so far. We'll talk about that, how you get your hands on that in just a second. But first, let's take a trip to limbo. You float aimlessly in an endless expanse. Your vision is partially obstructed by a vast sky of silvery purple clouds with a glowing vortex of orange and yellow light swirling between them. Chunks of material are hurled through the void like meteors as they constantly change from one state to another. A huge stone boulder floats by you as it somehow freezes into ice that then melts into water. The water droplets expand out, turning into globs of acid that spontaneously catch fire as they turn into small coals as the endless cycle continues. There's also not a consistent form of light here like a sun or anything. All of the light comes from these random occurrences and bursts of energy from lightning shooting from one of these clouds to another. You also can't move like normal. There's no gravity in this plane. You just sit there and you're floating in space. You, you try and move, your arms flail around, but you can't. You feel a pressure around your skin like you're underwater, but you can breathe normally. In order to move, you must think in that direction and your body starts to move in that direction. Now to start getting into some mechanics here is your movement speed in the plane of limbo equals your intelligence score times three. So if you have an intelligence of 10, that would be a movement speed of 30, which is essentially a fly speed because you can go anywhere you want. But those highly intelligent characters or creatures would have an intelligence of 20, moving your movement speed would be 60. And that right there is what I'm trying to do here in this type of limbo video. I wanna give you the sense and the feel of what it's like to be in this plane so you can understand what it would be like and to give the mechanics, the homebrew mechanics at that level to help the players at the table feel like this is somewhere far different than they've ever been before. I would say most sessions occur on the material plane, but my version of all the planes of existence, I want them to feel very different. So first I'm going to talk about the senses here is what does it feel like to be here? The first thing I already talked about seeing, you have limited vision and there's these purple silvery clouds that you can only see about 500 feet. You also see all that matter shifting around, floating and changing. You hear these almost explosions or changing a lightning strikes, fire, fire bursting out of nowhere, running waters, there's a, a cacophony of sounds that is, is also very jarring. And for your sense of smell, that's also going to be changing and swirling around too. Hopefully you can kind of see how, how crazy this would be. Is you smell gases, you smell burning, you smell fire, metal, citrus, herbs, rancid, sweet and sour, all the spectrums of smell. And you feel on your body that, that pressure around yourself, almost like you're underwater. But that also shifts and changes. Sometimes you might feel more pressure, like, you're, like when you're deeper underwater, and sometimes you might not feel it at all, but all of these is a bombardment of your senses. And I like to add this in here too, is this, there's an emotional sense to these planes. These planes deal with good, evil, lawful, chaotic. I like to give a little sense of motion about, I tell my, uh, I would describe it to my players, is you feel a slight urge to do something risky and take chances. I don't force this on them in any type of controlling type ways, but I just say that and maybe in, in, infer it in other times to just maybe inspire their role play or some of their decisions to be a little more risky in this plane of chaos. My goal here with this video series, which hopefully it becomes a series, is every single plane I want you to be able to feel it and not be afraid of these planes of existence and be able to go there and actually run it and have mechanics at your disposal to help get that feel across. Because trust me, I've seen all the videos out there on Limbo. It's how I soaked it in in the first place years ago. Uh, Mr. Rex, Jordan Fan, uh, AJ Pickett, Runesmith have all great videos going into the lore and all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to give you a little bit of that here, but I also want to give you some mechanics so that you can actually feel feel limbo. So let's get into some mechanics. When you're in the plane of limbo, there's a passive effect that's always there. This also really helps get across that feeling. Whenever you do certain things, it's going to trigger wild magic surges. And if you know anything about me, I absolutely love wild magic. So of course, limbo is like the home of wild magic. I have a whole two different videos where I go over wild magic. I have a D300 wild magic surge table. That's my, all that stuff will be down in the description. But whenever you roll for initiative, Wild Magic Surge. You can have the DM make one for the whole group and something crazy happens at the start of a combat. You can do it whenever you're casting at certain schools of magic, like conjuration spells, because creation is a big important thing here. Or another combat trigger is maybe if one of the players reaches half health, a Wild Magic Surge triggers. These are what I'm talking about. You as the DM can come up with your own triggers of what random stuff happens. Or if, if things are happening and you just decide to have it happen, you could randomly do it as well. It's very much in the spirit of the planes. Or you can think about role play type things. Whenever a player is 
is making a risky or chaotic type of decision. Or on the other side of that, maybe if they're being too safe or cautious, cause a trigger then. The whole point is to give some sort of way that the, the plane feels like it's acting on them. And another really important mechanic here is to be able to stabilize limbo around you. Limbo is constantly shifting and changing. The matter is changing. Lots of stuff. So how on earth would you possibly live here? What you can do is make an intelligence check. The DC is, is how many feet around you in a radius you're able to stabilize the plane around you. So a DC 5 would just be 5 foot area around yourself. Everything kind of calms down. Not no, no the Matter doesn't start just shifting all over the place. Place. Or a larger area of 20 feet in both directions around you would be a DC of 20. And this is important because you can only make this check once per day because it's really mentally exhausting to be able to do it. So this is a nice little strategy moment for your players, especially if they want to rest. Because one of the requirements that I have for rest, short rest or long rest, is you have to do it within stable limbo. So you have to really, as a group, try and survive this thing of, of first of all, how much area am I going to try and stabilize? Whatever. And what I mean by stabilize is if all this matter is shifting and changing. If you're in a space of stable limbo and that little meteor is floating through or some rock is floating through, as it's floating through your space, it's not like this a literal bubble like a force field. Stuff's still going to be able to come in and out. So you still need some sort of shelter. You can't just be floating there in the middle of everything. But while matter is in this stable limbo, it's not going to keep shifting and changing all dangerous life. And this mechanic lets civilizations actually be able to be formed. I put a city into this plane called the City of Tranquility that has these monks that are able to focus and meditate to keep the city safe because if not the city's material that it's made out of would just start shifting all over the place you can also get in a contest with people to be able to fight to stabilize limbo so if somebody has a section of limbo that's stabilized and they're in control of you can try and mentally take it back from them and while we're talking about surviving i'd even say you could grab one of those floating pieces of rock if you're in a stable limbo that you're in control of, make another intelligence check to try and turn it into a loaf of bread. There's some food that you just mentally created. Another thing I do to get across this different feeling when you're in another plane is mess with all the schools of magic. So all defensive abjuration spells would work oppositely as an offensive spell, which is really fun for the players to be able to figure that one out. Because I don't necessarily tell them all these things. Unless they find some NPC or some sort of lore nugget that they found before to be able to know these things, they're figuring this stuff out live on the fly. So they cast shield for the first time to protect themselves and raise their armor class by five. Instead of that, they actually deal five or I might even double it to 10 points of damage to their attacker. They might still get hit because their armor class didn't go up, but now they just damage the enemy. And that's the type of weird, crazy stuff that happens in Limbo. I would have the School of Conjuration not even work unless you're inside the Eternal Sea, which we'll get to that in just a second. Divination spells, you'd have to make a DC 15 check or else they go to the wrong person or give you the wrong information because all this swirling chaos it's like you accidentally called the wrong person if you send a sending spell or something. Evocation, I love here. It makes so much sense. Whatever evocation school you cast, whatever type of damage you're trying to do, you'd roll on the chaos table, which I have a 1d8 chaos table. I'll put it right here or something. So you can actually, that fireball might not be a fireball. It might be an ice ball. And the school of transmutation is huge here. Transmutation is literally changing from one state to another, like the entire plane of limbo. This is this whole thing. So I would extremely enhance this school of magic. Take some creative freedoms as the DM to do some crazy stuff. Even just at a base level, I've, I've done before where you have, if you cast a spell slot at third level, any transmutation spell you can cast with one level lower spell slot. Or you can increase the spell save DC against transmutation spells, or just come up with some crazy stuff on the moment. And when they're changing and shifting, Limbo takes over. So there's the feel of the planes. But now, how do you get there? How do you leave? More importantly, what are the key locations and key inhabitants? Time out. My patrons were the one who voted on this topic of which plane I was going to do first, and they chose Limbo. And now that means I'm going to have a monthly DC playbook over the plane of Limbo. This is a huge PDF that I've broken up into three different tiers. The first tier is this full breakdown. As you can see, all the mechanics, all the explanations, maps, custom art, all the different stuff having to do with Limbo, specifically written out, all the mechanics and everything. The tier two PDF adds 11 custom monsters, including Flod and Slod Lords and all, all that stuff, and a Chaos Phoenix. There's also multiple NPC quest givers I threw in there to be able to give some sort of characters in Limbo so they can actually meet, whether they meet them on the material plane and they send them to Limbo or in Limbo itself. And tier three goes to the next level with 11 different quest lines, adventure hooks, and everything having to do with Limbo and all the craziness. Has four random roll tables to really help you randomly roll 
on it, just like Limbo would want you to. 10 Limbo-inspired magic items and three Chaos Magic subclasses of a School of Chaos Wizard, a Chaos Warden Ranger, and a Chaos Domain Cleric. You can pick up all that for yourself over on Patreon. It'll be available during the months of May and June. But if it's after that and you're watching this video in the future, you can go to my website, which will also be linked down in the description, and pick it up individually there. I love all the planes of existence. I've spent years researching all the different things to really take them, run with it, make them my own. I brought in my whole team on this thing to be able to take these and homebrew all this different kind of stuff for you guys. So I'm really excited to see what y'all think. Back to Limbo. So how do you get in and out of Limbo? This is something that's not out there as much as I would have wanted to be. I really had to research this and take some <laughs> inspiration and homebrew my own methods too. So how I do this is for every single plane of existence, there are four ways to get to them. Wherever your current plane is, I'll have the diagram right here, in the plane of limbo, there's always going to be a plane that's on either side of it that's adjacent to it. You will be able to get to limbo through the plane above it, which is the wild lands. That's my homebrew renaming of the beast lands. Or the plane below it, which is pandemonium. There are rivers of the plains that flow through all the outer plains and kind of connect them together in an interesting way. And it actually literally flows through all of them. I have a whole video I could do on the cosmology of how all this stuff fits together, but basically the positive planes have the river of eternity that runs through it, and the negative planes have the river of souls that runs through it. I go into more detail in the PDF, but basically the river of eternity and the river of souls are kind of like the river of life and the river of death. The river of life is pretty awesome, and there's a fountain of youth vibes that have going there that are kind of blended that lore into the mix of things. But if you fall into the river, you can actually reverse yourself out of existence. These are planar rivers here. These are scary. And the River of Souls also ages you, the opposite of that. It rapidly ages you to the point where you would just disintegrate. So make sure you find a boatman to be able to take you along these rivers. Or that's gonna be pretty scary. The fanciest and the safest way is to go through a place called Sigil. I've rehomebrewed that name to be Nexus. It's like the central hub of all the planes, the Nexus of the planes. You can go there and it takes you to any of the planes in a very specific way. You need a certain key to be able to go through the portal and stuff. You actually have to make it with your mind for the limbo key, but that's a whole side video of how the, the city of Nexus works. If you're on the material plane and you want to go to limbo, here's the homebrew mechanic of what I've came up with to be able to have this happen. You know those aurora borealises in the sky, those like fancy floaty energies that are called auroras? That is how you get to limbo. In certain sections of the material plane, these auroras will form in the sky and you can start to find them or hunt them down, track them down, because there's this effect in the area. It absorbs magic. All kinds of magic, magic spells, magic effects, it makes them dormant, just like a plane as a anti-magic zone. It's like a giant field of this, where it, it actually nullifies all magic, magic spells, magic effects, and it absorbs it into the aurora, growing brighter and brighter and brighter, and then finally glowing supercharge, releasing a wild magic surge in the area, sometimes <laughs> very dangerous or sometimes very strange. But in that small window where it's supercharged and glowing bright for about 30 seconds, anyone who touches that light will go to the plane of limbo. Even just the act of entering into limbo cause wild magic surges to trigger, which will kick off the whole limbo event for your entire party with a bang. But that's what I'm trying to provide for you guys here in this video is I wanna be able to take the intimidating factor of the planes and help you be able to get there, leave there, all that kind of stuff. Because if you're in the actual plane of limbo, there's also these auroras there soaking in magic too to be able to get back to the material plane. This kind of video is really different, but I absolutely love it. And if you'd love it too, hit that like button, leave me a comment, tell me about the different types of stuff you'd wanna know about the planes if I miss anything for you because I know this is not just a classic lore video of just explaining the lore and the history of Limbo. I want to be able to make you actually be able to go there. So speaking of all the places in Limbo, here's a map that I had created by some of my artists here. Super awesome. This is the actual plane of Limbo. If there's a map, this is an ever-changing chaos, but this is just the generic map. You really can't make a map of Limbo. Everything's constantly shifting and changing, but this is just the basics. You have the river coming from the River of Souls all the way from, uh, from uh, Pandemonium coming all the way up and actually meeting. This is huge. This is huge. This is the one place in the entire universe where the two planes, the River of Eternity and the River of Souls, actually come and meet. Because the plane of true law on the other end of the spectrum actually don't have the rivers crossed. They actually meet into a pool, almost like a purification plant that changes from one to the other in a very lawful and controlled way. But over here in Limbo, the two opposite rivers actually flow into each other, 
forming a gigantic churning sea of the eternal sea. The rivers of life and death meet together in this swirling crazy pool, and in the center of this pool is the spawning stone, which I've renamed to be the creation stone, because I gotta keep homebrewing these things so I don't, you know, tread on too many toes. But this stone is rumored to be the creation of all life. It spawns changelings and it spawns slod, which I'll get to in just a second. But the, the god of Mechanus, Primus, he sent this artifact deep into limbo to try and balance out the chaos and bring it to law, but it had the opposite effect. Instead of controlling and regulating it, it started creating chaotic life. But I don't want to get carried away. Let's take a big step back and you can see the eternal storm. This storm is crazy. It has constant swirling vortexes that could send you into other planes of existence. It has wild magic surges doing random stuff. The chaos phoenix flies around, controls the area. There's also the queen of chaos, which I'm not going to get into her. That's a whole, if you want to see a video entirely on her, I could do that. But this part is really cool. The eternal storm is actually backed up to the inner planes. Taking a big step back, looking at the big picture now, you see where Limbo is, and in the very center where the material plane is, surrounding that is the inner planes, the plane of fire, earth, air, water, all that stuff. And there's the elemental chaos, which is the shifting, churning of all the elements. And if you notice, Limbo is right up next to that. So for myself in this cosmology, it has a little bit more physical nature to it. The eternal storm is at that barrier between the inner planes and the elemental chaos and the plane of limbo. That limbo is the cause and bleeding into, there's a crack and a rift in it. That's a whole little quest line that I have for you. But there's a rift and a crack in there that's causing the bleeding of the chaotic energies to affect the inner planes and start swirling them together. And limbo caused the elemental chaos. And this eternal storm is the source of wild magic in all the universe. Now, before I go off on a tangent about wild magic, taking the big final step back here, you can see the city of tranquility, which is the home to the monastery of Zen. If you know your lore, you've heard of the gith, who have branched into the Gith Yankee and the Gith Zarai. This is the Gith Zarai's main monastery where their monks hone their mental energies to be able to perfect it. This is where those monks meditate on rotation to keep this city safe, and including the city and other small settlements spread throughout Limbo. In fact, if you run into most any sort of safe sanctuary, there's probably something having to do with the Gith Zarai there. I have them be a general source of good in this plane, because this is Limbo, it's in the dead center here. You're not gonna have a huge overpowering of good, huge overpowering of evil, lots of neutral stuff going on. So in general, the Gith Zarai are that kind of source of good or neutral. But on the bad side of things, you have the Kirthene, which is an insectoid race with this massive hive. I've homebrewed these things. These are normally not this way. Again, this is my homebrew spin on this whole thing. These are a race of insects that have these antennae and they can all link psychically together. And they're extremely smart race, which is extremely dangerous here in Limbo. Their intelligence is off the charts and they can move around scarily fast. They can communicate telepathically with each other and to their queen, which means they also have a wide reach of this stable Limbo and they can actually control large parts of Limbo and move around very quickly. Dangerous stuff. But... <laughs> The scariest things here, and I absolutely love this race, it's one of my favorite races in all of D&D, are the Slaw. They are demon toad-like creatures with claws and fangs. Scary looking stuff here. I had my artist actually make this for the PDF. Looks super sweet, but these things are crazy. They have a whole hierarchy of reds and blues and greens, all the way, evolving all the way up to the Slaw Lords. The Slaw and their entire race protect that spawning stone, and this is the source of their entire species of where it comes from. Now, I have taken this entire hierarchy of slot and how they work and really, really ran with it, and I absolutely love it, but I wanna know if you like it. So I'm gonna do a slot timeout. Do you wanna see this homebrew monster style of what I would do with certain different races in D&D? Of taking the normal stat blocks and the normal lore and just really taking it and running with it, put my own homebrew spin on them, mechanics and all. Trust me, just like this video, I would not have it be just a full-on lore session. There's plenty of videos that do a great job at just the lore part of things, but I want to take that lore, shake it up, put some mechanics to it, and let me know. Leave a comment down below if you want me to do that. However many likes this video gets, it will be my really best indicator to know if I should do a slot follow-up to this thing. I really don't know how well these things are going to go, but I personally love the planes of existence. I've spent years diving into them to really see what it's like, because originally they intimidated me as a dungeon master. I would not have felt comfortable to go to those planes of existence, and I didn't want to have that weak spot in my DMing game, so I'm trying to go out there, do all my research I can, and give it to you guys. Okay. My goal here with this planar breakdown video series is to show you guys simple creative ways for understanding and then being able to customize locations, monsters, lore, mechanics, all that kind of stuff so that you can have your players at the table really feel like they're in limbo. And I just remembered exit effects. Every single plane that I have my players go to, every single plane that I run, whenever you leave the plane, there's some sort of saving throw once you leave it and you actually get back to where you're going from, there's a saving throw. So you make a constitution saving throw and if you fail, 
you actually have part of the plane of limbo linger and stick with you like a limbo static. And that is so awesome because now you as the dungeon master can trigger a wild magic surge whenever you want. So myself as the dungeon master, I have a little sticky note and I write down who has failed the save and I just trigger it at the most random time possible in the spirit of limbo. But you could also have the next time they take a long rest, next time they cast a spell, whatever other sort of triggers that you want to officially assign to it. And I want to stop and say this right now. Thank you so much to all the people from the dungeon company that I've been having to help me with these things because I am only one person and trying to do as much as I possibly can. So the more people I can bring in to do custom art, here's the list of artists right here, to be able to think about homebrew stuff, to be able to do random roll tables, NPCs, all this different types of stuff. I could not do all of this by myself, but I, I appreciate so much everyone who's coming in and helping. So if you're interested in joining in this creative process, whether it be art or actually homebrewing stuff, there'll be a link to join my Discord. I have a dungeon company Discord. You can go in and check out see all the different roles, all the different stuff you can offer up and help out with, react to the roles and join there. But let me know if you like all this stuff. If you want to pick up this copy of Limbo, again, it's the biggest, baddest PDF that I've ever made. It's linked right here for it on Patreon, or it'll be linked down in the description if you're watching this in the future. So until next time, stay creative. Think outside that box. Peace.